It's mid-September 2015. I'm looking at the updated version of Super Pedestrian's Copenhagen wheel. I got to check this out like a year and a half ago near MIT. I actually went to their labs, visited, got a bunch of feedback, and apparently everything has changed since then. And people are still kind of waiting on their pre-orders, but they're very close to shipping at this point. It's $950 for like a limited time, and then it's going up to $1,200. Um, so I guess that's kind of the backstory. I want to kind of jump into how this this works with your bike. They sell the the kind of the wheel spoked in with these really unique spokes uh, with a couple different sizes, 26 inch or 28 inch. That's that 700C, and I gotta say it's really beautiful. I think the the design of the hub is maybe even narrower than before. It's magnesium on the casing right here. The other one that I saw it kind of had kind of like a battery cover built onto it. This one does not. I think you'd actually have to take the screws out, these like star screws to get at the battery pack. 48 volts, 5.5 amp hour. So really like heavy on the voltage side and a lot of power and it really delivers power. I've been riding around the test track here at Interbike, trying it out. Um, they say it's got like 12 sensors built in. So unlike a lot of electric bikes that have cadence sensors built right here into the chain ring area, this one kind of has cadence sensor torque sensor, speed sensor, accelerometers, gyrometers, all kinds of stuff built into it. They didn't tell me all of them, they said 12. So I'm kind of as many as I can think of here. Uh, so it knows if you're going up on an incline like that, it might know, you know, if you're stepping on the gas when you're pedaling. And I, I noticed that I was in eco mode right here, cruising around a minute ago. And you know, it's, it's gentle, it's subtle, it's smooth. And then when I push down harder on the cranks, well then, you know, yeah, definitely accelerated. The other cool thing about this is that it comes in like a single speed setup if you want with 120 millimeter dropouts or up to like 135. They've got a seven speed cassette here, but they can go seven to 10. So it's very custom. You kind of pick the wheel size, you pick the gears. I love that it actually has gears because some of the other ones like Fly Cly, um, or the Electron wheel, which is actually a front one, um, you know, you, it, it's questionable how that's going to interact with your drivetrain, and it's nice to be able to have those gears so you can climb and stuff. Of course, this is a little bit more rear heavy. They say it's about 15 pounds, which, you know, it's, it's not, not too terrible. I haven't been able to, to weigh it myself, but that's not bad. And, you know, back to the magnesium and everything being really tightly integrated. They say that it's a 350 watt gearless direct drive motor, does have regeneration. So if you're pedaling forward and then you, you want to like brake, but also capture energy, you can pedal backwards and it, it really kicks in. It's actually very satisfying. It's nice to be able to slow down that way and recapture some of your energy. Um, just very cool. You can see here, they've got little battery LED readouts and call this the Rosenberger connector. I, I call it the energy bus standard. Um, it's magnetic, got this nice little cover that flips right in. And then this is the on off switch. So when you twist that, it turns the, turns the wheel on and off and it is completely wireless. So you need a smartphone to, to ride this thing. We've got a, an iOS phone right here, an Apple phone, but there's also Android devices. It's compatible and it's very, very simple. When you start off, you can send them some feedback and you've got settings. There's a map and stuff, average speed, distance duration. You know, there's kind of a, a bunch of feedback on how you've been, been using the bike. Uh, but when you actually want to take a ride, you go into this little, it says nitro, but it's a little picture of the wheel. And this is where you pick, pick the speed and everything that you want, or power output, I should say. So it shows you your battery level, and then it's got this interesting wheel readout over here. So if the wheel's putting out more energy, that's gonna fill up. If you're putting more energy, that's gonna fill out. So it's giving you real-time feedback on how the bike versus you are putting energy into the ride. So that's cool. We can go all the way down from exercise, which is basically just a light regeneration mode, to off, that's just a bicycle wheel. Maybe with regen, so you could still kind of get capture some of that. I'm not sure I should try to test that. Eco mode, so that's the lowest standard turbo. So turbo, of course, the most satisfying. Everyone's excited about that. 20 mile per hour top speed in the United States. Again, 350 watt rating for the United States, 250 if you're international. Um, I think it still just comes kind of in that red, but they're working on like an open SDK thing so that you can potentially as a developer integrate this and get some feedback about potholes, about how the bike is being used and how the community is put together. So I really, I think that's kind of neat. And it does actually have a, a range estimator right here. So we have turbo, eco, off, exercise. Depending on how you're using it, they estimate 25 to 30 mile range per charge. That's pretty good, you know, not bad, especially for something so light and compact that really doesn't impact the rest of your, your bike. And if you had a, a bike that you bought with, you know, two normal spoked in wheels, you could always just take this off if you wanted to and, you know, swap it out really easily. So I love that. 
Um, just, you know, all, all things worth keeping in mind. You got to supply your own fenders and lights and it's not really integrated. You're going to have to run your phone off of its own juice. There's, there's no way to like connect the USB power to the, the batteries that are inside the hub. You know, a lot of electric bikes, they have like a down to mounted battery pack and you can, you can run off of that with your phone. And that's kind of nice because, you know, same with the lights. In this case, you cannot. Okay, so I'm pulling it out. We're gonna find a gap here on the test track. I'm gonna start out, just swipe, maybe, actually I'm gonna do eco. And again, this thing is super quiet. Nice and smooth, just super smooth. And then if, if you want to, you know, you press down a little harder on the gas and that's when you get the power. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna do a hill climb here. So we got the hill up there, got the sensors going, boost in it. You can see my output right here, kind of the red and the blue. Very nice. And then I can simply swipe here, get to turbo mode. Whoa, you really feel it. Kind of that nice ticking sound there in the background. There we go. Let's see if we can hit 20. Got limited space here at the test track. Uh, still nice to get to try this bike out and just, you know, give it a, give it a quick ride. So. so I'm back at the booth here and I got one of these things plugged in and I just wanted to show the energy bus a little bit more closely. Look at that, there's the magnet right there just hanging off the axle. It's kind of convenient if you're having to reach in here. Get that plugged in. There we go, just clicks in. A battery charger over here. I pulled up their website a minute ago and, uh, you know, I was able to check out the warranty. It looks like it's kind of a one year limited warranty and 500 charge cycles at 70% of the capacity. So, you know, not, not bad. A year and they also sell um, kind of replacement spokes because these are sort of unique. Um, you know, and it did feel pretty comfortable. You're having a little bit of a shorter length on this. It should, that can be a little bit more durable, but you don't quite have the same flex as if this was just a standard axle. One of the other cool features that this offers is that they can remotely diagnose it. And it has a sleep mode. So as soon as you walk away from the bike with your app on your phone, it kind of, it, it sort of locks itself. It's not physically locked like with a magnetic, you know, regen at high power kind of a lock. It's just no one else can really get into it unless they uh, log in and register and kind of have your account and, and the security uh, connections between the wheel and the phone. So if you did lose your phone, you could always register your new phone and reconnect, but kind of keep that in mind. It's a, a neat way to do security. It's really cool to see technology, um, you know, coming into with smartphones and, and all that other stuff. And I guess it's up to you. Um, you, can, you can have your own little smartphone adapter uh, or they've got this quad lock, kind of a, a little mount and it's been really nice. You can kind of swivel it, it's very minimal, take it off if you need to, so that's cool. I think that's kind of it. Again, really affordable. They've been working on this thing, it seems like forever, finally getting close to having a product. So that's the super pedestrian Copenhagen wheel. Um, really, you know, pr pretty satisfying. I'm glad they're putting in the extra effort and time to get it done. Um, definitely ready to see it out there. Glad it works for both different kinds of smartphones. For the full write-up on this and uh, some pictures and specs and comments and stuff, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Ride safe.